Morning. Over Middleton Lake today. The weather's supposed to be pretty nice all day today. But um, I'm up at stupid o'clock. I think it's actually something like half five, 20 to six, something like that, I don't know. Um, so I've come over quite early. I've had a little 10 minutes with the swallows, but for some mad reason, there's a load of mist just come down and it's got really misty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head straight over to the lakes and hopefully get some kind of, I don't know, different shots over there than what I've got before. So that's the plan. So I'm gonna crack on quick before it disappears. Walking through this wood today, the smell of the garlic is so strong. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite overpowering. It's a shame because there's quite a few bluebells on either side, but there's none like a big clump of them where you can kind of get a decent composition. It's a bit of a shame really. I did take a quick snap, but no, it's uh, it's not the place to take in photos of bluebells unless you just want the odd one or two. But this garlic, whoa, stinks. So what I mean about this fog, or mist, it's pretty cold, isn't it? But you know I wanted the fog, this is a little bit too much. I can't, uh, I can't see anything. I've seen a few things kind of flying around, but they're just, um, well, it's just too foggy at the moment. It needs to just clear a little bit. Uh, I think my plan has changed. I'm gonna head up to the corner where the owl is because the owl is still flying around by the barn. And I did see it when I came in at the car park but it was kind of flying away from me. So I'm hoping that the other one's still flying about. Um, never know, let's go and have a look. No, oh, look at it. It's uh, way too foggy at the moment. So my plan of getting something different and that's not gonna work. It's, um, it's just too much. Needs to clear a little bit. It's a shame really, because uh, it's, it's a really nice light to look at. I suppose I'll just um, soak it all in rather than try and worry about getting a shot. There are some of these little birds in the uh, grass, which I might be able to get a couple of shots of. So I might concentrate on that rather than trying to get something further out. Oh well, we'll crack on. I'm sure it'll lift. Well, believe it or not, the mist is actually clearing now, which is a bit of a good thing, really, because it's um, it's too much. And uh, if it carries on like this too long, People will be here. I've just heard the cuckoo up the top, which is um, nice. So it'd be nice if it kind of come down this way. And I've got two um, grey lag geese in front of me. And the water's really calm and it's a nice reflection and the, no the light is nice, but the fog is still a little bit too much from where they are and it's looking a bit blurry. So I'm hoping that kind of kind of clears, kind of kind of. I hope that kind of clears in a minute, a little bit more while the water's still calm and the light's still nice. But I've took a few shots anyway. Um, if they're any good, I'll show them you now. where they're being foggy it kind of gave me a bit of an idea what I thought I'd do was I thought I'd do five tips that or five things that I wish I knew when I started out doing bird photography that I know now um, and the first one the most important one is light 
when I first started, I'd just see a bird and I'd take the photo regardless. And then I'd be like, why hasn't it come out? What, well, why can't I see all the details? And it is all down to light. Like all photography, it is down to light. But when you want to get, you know, all the details of the feathers and you want to get that, you know, glisten in the eye, the light has to be in the right place. And there's been many times when I've seen a bird up in the tree and think, oh, that's a, a so-and-so and I haven't got a photo of that. And I've stood there taking, you know, 15, 20 photos of it. And when I've got back, it's just black, you know, it's just really dark and like shadow, like a shadow. And the thing is, is if it looks like a shadow to you when you're taking the photo, no amount of editing in Lightroom or Photoshop is going to bring those details out. So the tip that I'm trying to say is, if it looks naff with your eyes, it's going to look naff on a photo. My next tip is to know the behaviour of the bird that you're taking the photo of. Different birds do different things. They come out at different times. They fly in different ways. They take off in different ways. If you kind of know what that bird normally does, chances are you're going to be able to get a better shot. For example, pigeons, when they fly, they kind of go up and down, up and down. So you can kind of get some nice shots of them when they're kind of going up if you know what i mean with the wings all spread collared doves are fairly timid so you, you know they will kind of fly away fairly quick obviously smaller birds such as blue tits don't hang around for long Spar sparrows don't angle around for long blackbirds robins normally will stay around for a bit longer and become a bit seem a bit more tame so yeah Know your bird, know what it's going to do, and um, it helps to get a better shot. Excuse me, but the sun's in my eyes. So yeah, that was kind of tip number two, know your subject and uh, what it's going to do. Tip number three, practice, practice, practice. I've said this before, but it does need a lot of practice for whatever kind of bird you're gonna take a photo of. Once you kind of know its habits, you've still got to practice it, you know, getting that shot, getting your shutter speed right, um, getting the light right. So it is a hell of a lot of practice, um, but don't be put off because each shot does get better and better, believe it or not. I mean, I've been doing bird photography now probably for about three or four years and uh, I still find that, you know, when I look at some photos now, I know I've got a better camera and a better uh, system. Your shots actually get better in regards to flight positions, the light, the shutter speed. Um, so, yeah, lots and lots of practice um, and don't be put off if you have like a dry run of, I don't know, a month or two where it just seems to be getting worse, it does get better. My next tip is location. Find yourself a good location not every nature reserve is the same. That's probably why I come to Lady, uh, Middleton Lake so much because, you know, I'm guaranteed a shot here. There's always so much going on. But then if, you go, if I go like Lady Walk, I can struggle. It can be hit and miss. So find yourself a good location because if you keep going to somewhere that you're not getting results, you'll get put off and um, you'll lose interest. So location, find a good one.
the next tip is don't be put off by other bird photography and getting caught up with, I need a better camera to do the job and my camera's not good enough because look at the photos this photographer's got and he's got this multi, multi, you know, 100 pound camera. That's not the case. I've took some great photos on, you know, an entry level camera. It's about practice and um, again, knowing your subject, getting the light right and practice and practice. As I've said before with my video channels, I like to show you the crap as well as the good. Now, you might see these videos of other photographers, bird photographers that have taken this amazing photo of, I don't know, a swallow for instance, and it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, but it doesn't, they don't show you the, what, couple of thousand photos it took to get that photo. So don't get put off by other people because they're hiding a lot of the crap from you. You know, they might have gone out for 10 days solid to try and get that one shot and you're going out for what, an hour or two and hoping to come back with the same kind of shot. Um, yeah, don't be put off by other people. It's, your photography is all about you and it's what you want to achieve and what you are happy with. My next tip is to know the best time of day to go out shooting birds. For me, I always find it's first thing in the morning up until about 10, 11 o'clock and then any time after like three till about seven. Um, midday, it, it goes very, very quiet. Obviously you'll get things like ducks and that and swans still on water. But as for like your little birds flying around feeding, they kind of seem to drop off after about 11 o'clock. So get out early in the morning or in the afternoon. I'm getting quite lucky. Uh, there's a little white throat on the bushes. I think it's a white throat. Um, and it keeps flying up in the air and uh, trying to catch some insects, but then flying back down. So I'm getting some kind of good in-flight shots. I'm just bursting loads. So that when I can go back home, I, you know, I get a good choice to pick from. But I think I've got some good ones. But it keeps flying away and then coming back to the same branch, so he'll be back. So I've had a, a good half hour. With the, it was a sedge warbler, not a white throat. Um, and I think I've got some really good in-flight shots. I'm gonna slowly have a slow walk. Slowly have a slow walk. I'm good with words, aren't I? I'm gonna have a slow walk back. I don't think I feel like I took a lot of photos today, but the sedge warbler ones I think will make up for it. So yeah, I'm gonna put that camera away now. I don't think there'll be much more talking. Well, there's no more talking really to be done. I'll probably bored you all enough anyway. So I'm gonna have a slow walk back, hopefully take some photos of the swallows, maybe get a couple of the uh, birds on the canal bridge, and then that'll do me. So I hope I haven't bored you too much. Yeah, I'm boring you, I'm boring myself. So until next time, thanks for watching, and um, catch you soon. Mm -hmm.